her yerden canlı yayın falan diye çıkmaya başladı ben de. Hello everyone. <gülüyor> Now we are live. I guess. Oh. Uh, hi Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, welcome to today's AWE talk. Uh, it's going to be about exploring XR technologies in art in the frame of gender perspective. Uh, we have a very special guest and our speaker artist here to share their insights on how XR uh, reshaping their art and uh, challenging gender norms. Uh, I'm pro proud to introduce them, uh, these talented Turkish artists uh, in this season today. Irem Çoban, Mertem Şahin, and Ahmet Rüstem Ekici. Thanks for coming. <laughs> We thank you for your invitation. Yeah, for your invitation, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank we you have a time limit. We have an hour, thank you. Uh, but we have lots of things to talk about. Uh, first of all, I will introduce myself very quickly and keep continue with our uh, guest speakers. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Aileen Taslak. I'm a multidisciplinary artist and I'm a founder of Mixer Studios. Uh, currently, I'm working in uh, XR field in my uh, artworks uh, and also working with Mixer Studio. You can check our socials to get more details. And let's begin this inspiring <laughs> talk. Uh, first, I want to introduce Ahmed Rüstem. Uh, he's a multidisciplinary artist and stage designer. His work centers around the relationship between the body and architecture, um, drawing inspiration from the narrative forms of archaeological objects and concerns of optical perception. Uh, he continues to expand his visual, um, sorry, yeah, his visual storytelling through tools uh, such as AR and VR. Uh, Ahmed Mustam's works in AR and VR have been exhibited at various venues, including the Ars Electronica Concert House, um, uh, CADAP Online, XX Art uh, Plein Air, Museum Queer Arts Museum, uh, Yarat Contemporary. Uh, and uh, Thessaloniki Queer Arts Festival. After creating Hammam, uh, one of the Turkey's pioneering augmented reality exhibitions, he create, uh, created the VR experience Sauna, which we are gonna listen soon. Um, thanks, Ahmed. Uh, what a Thank great you. background. <laughs> Thank you. Let's, con <laughs> let's continue with Matam Shahin. Uh, she's an artist and designer from Turkey. Too. Her illustrations have received awards uh, or have been selected by Society of Illustration, American Illustration, Applied Arts, Bologna Children's Book Fair, and 3x3. Uh, the book that she illustrated, P is for Pussy, got successful media appearances, notably Huffington Post and BuzzFeed. Uh, her sketches with Plus for Plus from AI, work with AI technology has been selected for the permanent collection of the National Gallery uh, in London. Apple, Meta and Giphy are some of the companies she has worked with. Thanks for coming, Meta. Thank you again for the invitation and the introduction. Thank you. Uh, and Iram Choban. Iram Choban is a media artist and academic from Turkey. She has participated in group exhibitions, festivals, uh, and workshops all around the world. In the Art Woman 2020 Geographies exhibition organized by Primo Piano Living Gallery in Lissi, Italy, she was awarded the Best Technical Practice Award and the Silver Certificate. Uh, she was one of the seven resident artists of Imensiva 2022 by Esponseda Institute of Art and Culture in Barcelona, Spain. Um, also, she was one of the mentors of Istanbul XR uh, Art Residency 2022 and art, uh, Artistic Coordinator of Metas Park Hackathon 2023 in Istanbul. She is one of the artists of the London-based Sedition Art Platform. Yes. Okay. I'm very excited to start with our first questions then. Okay, let's ask our first questions to our guests. 
Um, and also, I want to add something. Sorry. Um, before starting, I would like to point out that this talk will um, not be like a panel discussion. Uh, it's uh, but rather as artists' narratives uh, narratives about their works and experiences. Yeah, let's start with the first question. How did you first encounter XR technologies, and what motivated you to use these technologies in your art? We could start with Iran. Okay, thank you, Aydin. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I can start by saying that uh, I've always found um, I've always found the clamp lives and uh, that individual go through in today's ready lives interesting. So in this access, actually, I try to embody the feelings that are internalized in the daily life practices, which also um, reflects the general views about the life. So having used interdisciplinary approach by using combination of digital drawing, video, photography, motion graphics, and generative, I actually I aim to convey the multidimensional character of human mind. So in my work. Uh, focusing on especially on gender and identity issues, I explore the representation phenomenon of some sort of a feminist art, we can say that. And in terms of uh, its relation to my fields of work, I've been interested in XR technologies for a few years uh, in order to combine these technologies with my artistic practice uh, practices. And in this context, uh, context um, I would like to say that actually I first encountered virtual reality during the creation of my first personal solo exhibition sponsored by Agora Digital Art Platform. And now you are watching uh, some sort of scenes from that uh, exhibition. And uh, about Agora Digital Art Platform, I can say that uh, it is based in London and identifies itself as a decentralized enterprise. And they're on a mission to uh, promote women artists who create with and also in new media because digital art uh, includes deeper reflection on and interpretation of all world around us. So uh, as a result of this, uh, I can say that they work with women artists who want to use that kind of new ways of thinking, expression and discussion in their art. And actually, I can say that I'm very glad to be part of that kind of community as an artist. And about my uh, exhibition, the art exhibition, uh, which is called Women in Proverbs, I can say that actually it deals with gender issues and uh, problematizes the representation of women in patriarchal societies. So uh, as you can see, there are uh, 12 illustrations and one video work uh, that visualize the way uh, proverbs of different patriarchal cultures depict uh, women identity. And about the impetus of this project, I can say that in fact it comes from uh, the concept of equal uh, right to life. So that kind of awareness has allowed me uh, to cultivate a sense of empathy. And I want to tell people about the gender and identity issues in the world. So at this point, Minike Schipper's book, which is called Women and Proverbs Worldwide, inspired me a lot. And I chose proverbs, uh, visualized them, and tried to show the uh, status of the women in the society. But uh, of course, I can say that it's an ongoing project and I'm planning to add more illustrations on that exhibition. And also looking at the exhibition as a whole, you will see that all around the world, women are traditionally undervalued. And with the um, digitalization, digital art brings in a kind of liberation of women who are left behind and oppressed in all aspects of public life. And this is, I think, um, one of the reasons that make digital art attractive for me, especially maybe in general for women artists. Uh, I believe that uh, Meltem uh, has some words to, uh, about this to say it. And because it's more accessible and more shareable, and uh, it puts an end uh, to the domestication of women. So, for instance, in societies, most of the societies where women still oppress, maybe we can count in that society as well. Women artists have the chance to reach their audience from all around the world and passing beyond um, their, maybe we can say that local restrictions. So I want to make this exhibition related to this global problem in a places and I can say that a timeless way. So digital art, uh, in that way, digital art is so emancipatory for me due to the opportunity to use different opportunities as well and multiple senses in it. 
because it's very important to interact with the meaning of the work and the work itself to be um, able to interpret it. So with the support uh, of Agora Digital Art, uh, we have organized this VR exhibition. So I have the chance to reach people all around the world and question this common question globally. And uh, also being in a VR exhibition, besides reach, reaching a worldwide audience, it also brings the opportunity to, let's say, my audience for this example, uh, for this exhibition example, to be in um, 360 degrees of the world and that I have built within with the technical possibilities of the visitors as well. So the, that opportunity to be in the exhibition area with our avatars at the same time, of course, gives us the opportunity to share our experience and also maybe thoughts. So in that part, especially, I think that it's important for me to uh, have that kind of experience as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, very good to see this. And I really want to also uh, people to check with the uh, can, where can we find the link or visit your um, you, 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 you can find on the website of Agora Digital Art. You can search as Women in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's very easy to reach it out. Okay, people who are interested, please uh, check it <laughs> and uh, see the exhibition too. Okay, yeah. thank you, Iram. Thank and you. And we can keep continue with uh, Maltem. Uh, do you want me to repeat the questions again? Uh, no, it's okay, thank you. And. So I wanted to thank you, Yuran, for sharing us. I didn't know about it, and I will definitely uh, check for it. It's just such an interesting idea behind the project. I love it. Thank and you. And for, <laughs> for me, the, uh, I was studying graphic design at Turkish University in Turkey, Ankara. And when I was studying, uh, I was planning to be a uh, children's book illustrator and i was applying for different scholarships and everything so i got a master's degree uh, and i went to us with a fulbright scholarship and there i was planning to be like the best children's book illustrator or something like that but there my life changed because there was a engineer from nasa and he was giving us uh, electronics for artist class so after i took his class i was like super uh i'm impressed by the class and if also for my high school level i was uh, doing science background as well so at masters i realized that actually i can like combine technology with art and it's possible there's something called like interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary practices so then i start taking robotics class at my uh, grad graduation studies also then i start doing also delving into XR and stuff and it was like a really interesting journey for me and I really enjoy like XR technologies because I think like uh, people are like somehow like with I don't know high art in the white cubes you cannot reach everyone like people feel like it's like unapproachable or it's like but with XR like VR and AR and everything it's almost like a game and people feel more emerging to it so it's also easier for like i don't know like any people who are not interested in art can find themselves like amazed in a vr experience or ar experience i think these are like really uh like intriguing for me and it was like fresh for me and approachable and interactive so these uh things that xr brings i think like also iram said like there's no boundaries there are no countries everyone can be like in the same room and they can be with the ethnicity they want, with the appearance they want, with the gender they want. So there are like like much more flexibilities in duels, like technologies that also as an artist excites me. Thank you. Oh, Eileen, you are muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Muted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Matt. Um, okay, uh, let's continue with Ahmed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello again. Uh, as Matam, I'm also for, graduated from Birkent University, Faculty of Fine Arts, Interior Architecture Department. Uh, so with Interior Architecture, we really learned very well about how to visualize our ideas with 3D renders and with our other uh, 3D tools 
how we can like 3D model or 3D, how we can shape our ideas into 3D or like 2D renders with 2D renders. But after my education, I started with uh, stage design and set design uh, discipline, the, which teach me a lot about, again, how to control spaces, how to design spaces for the camera, how what camera sees, because TV set design is a special field about what you design for a camera, not for the like, not for like daily architecture. That's why uh, it really, I had the feeling that days uh, about one day we will all like use 3D tools and design 3D spaces and we will kind of experience more 3D areas. And it was great that it's been like more than 20 years right now I have been using 3D tools to visualize my ideas. But with, with the art intersection, it also helped me a lot about telling stories, uh, to power up my storytelling ways, to create uh, budget-free spaces, actually, because when you are trying to create a space, it's it has got lots of construction details or so on, and it's all about the budget. But with 3D spaces, I can easily visualize my ideas and uh, create immersive spaces. And gravity, what I love is free gravity so zero gravity is one of the greatest thing about uh, for me about uh, immersive spaces and 3d spaces so that kind of stuff really uh, motivates me about creating more uh, three-dimensional areas uh, or, and more um, vr areas actually so and i will also maybe later i will also share about some of my uh, vr uh, designs and vr uh, artworks um, the other thing uh, both of my friends also mentioned is interaction with the visitors because we can now see how many visitors we are having, with how visitors behave, uh, what kind of architecture do we need in uh, virtual spaces. So those questions also uh, really excites me. Yeah, thank you. Like these all three artists have been in digital space for a long time. But for XR, uh, it's a kind of, we could say new, like they've all, they all been there for maybe more than three years still for in XR. But for, for them in digital art, uh, they've been there uh, more than XR. But that's why these uh, comments and these informations are very uh, new. And for me, it's so important uh, to listen from them. Uh, yeah, for the next question, we will also see uh, our uh, sp speaker artists' works uh, during their talk. Uh, the question is, uh, okay, gender perspectives in art often challenge traditional norms and stereotypes. Uh, how have XR technologies help you uh, challenge traditional gender norms and create more inclusive narratives in your art? Uh, we will uh, see with their works. We will check with their works and we can continue with uh, Ahmed again. We can just, yeah, keep continue from him. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah. As you mentioned, XR is totally uh, something like new. We are talking with uh, combining different technologies all together and like with uh, creating new experiences with different tools. Uh, what really excites me about also talking about my art and uh, in terms of my art, I love creating spaces. I love uh, searching about spaces with gender norms, uh, especially spaces about which identify, tries to identify gender or genderless spaces, actually. Uh, so for me, art is also trying to give information for the future because sometimes it, some spaces might have been shut down or closed down or in terms of culture or in terms of uh, like need. Uh, sometimes we don't need spaces anymore. So I started to search about how gender really shapes architecture, how architecture has amazing connection with genders. So I search about gynecums in archeology span uh, which talks a lot about uh, women and uh, architecture. And after that, I uh, search about uh, hammams, especially very important, uh, in, very important in uh, Turkish culture. 
but it also has amazing ancient Roman and Greek uh, Roman Empire uh, roots. And that's why my first, uh, one of my first solo exhibition was about hammams and bathhouses and how we define gender in bathhouses. And after that, I decided to use uh, VR technology to create a sauna, and it's if and I planned a sauna. Uh, you can see on the right side, it has an entrance. It has a like ticket sale area. It has a bar, locker room, a pool, a steam room, a sauna, a gym, and dark rooms. Because when we think about a sauna, it's only a five square meter uh, small wooden cabinet that you enter and you have a heat or something like that. But in terms of uh, gay culture, especially. It has a special place. It has a special area to talk about, to tell uh, stories about. So uh, for me to visualize the sauna was so, so important to tell some architectural details, architectural secrets, maybe architectural uh, or behavioral uh, information for the future. That was very important for me to create the whole area. And I ask many queer uh, artists in Turkey if they let me to use their works in sauna so I can create each room with specific works of arts from different queer artists uh, in Turkey. So each room, each area was telling a different um, story and there was a sauna ghost actually and the sauna ghost was uh, telling the main story. Yeah, this is uh, how you enter sauna. It was starting with the keys what I, um, that it was in 2020, so that wa that's why it's not like a walkthrough uh, because of that time's technology. If I created it right now, maybe it would be better. Uh, but that was really great for us and for especially for me because uh, with the help of Sona, we really had amazing connection with worldwide, especially Sona had more than 40,000 visitors when it was online. So it had amazing storytelling ways in each room. It, every room had different stories and every room had this different visuals. Uh, so it was really amazing experience for me to create a space uh, freely, actually. Um, and Sauna was no curator uh, exhibition and there was no curator, there was no gallery, no museums. So the artist had a space to show their works. So for me, especially, uh, digital worlds, um, the one of the most important thing is to, to find yourself a place because sometimes you can, it's not easy to find a place to exhibit your works, to talk about your art or to tell about your stories. So for me, like VR and extended reality technologies help, will help uh, artists a lot about those works. And after that, I uh, create an exhibition about that, uh, bathrooms and toilets, especially where we see gender norms and try to find some archeo, um, architectural details about toilets and bathrooms and so on. I love the fluidity in digital worlds. That's why, uh, I mean, especially with queer art and fluidity really talks a lot to me. Thank you, Ahmed. Works are great, especially I really loved sauna. I've been, I also uh, you. heard from you before. It looks very good. And yeah, and do we have a chance to experience it right now? Uh, do yeah, we have any um, from my own webpage, uh, ahmedrustam.com or aradeco.com. It's still with, uh, that, that's one of the advantages of uh, VR uh, exhibitions too, because when you have an exhibition in a gallery, it's maybe for only one week or for only one month or six months, uh, but it's finished. So only there are some documentaries about uh, your art and your exhibition in, if you have some like uh, interviews or like shootings or something like that. Uh, but for VR exhibitions, it's less forever. It's it can stay forever. You can go seven twenty four and visit the gallery anytime. Also, it's really nice to you. Also, did all the creation part of it. Yeah, you created everything mm -hmm. and you designed it. And it's also mm -hmm. as an artist, it's also a really good experience uh, to just on the 
being in the kitchen. <laughs> Thank yes. you, Ahmed. Is, These yeah. are great. And uh, let's continue with. Um, ah, sorry, I didn't just. I just forgot. Yeah, this to... was another work from the bath bathrooms and toilets because toilets and bathrooms are one of the most important parts of architectural design, but also the least uh, important part of the architectural design. So I try to like change the tiles, which we cannot change easily because we can paint our rooms very easily. We can change our decoration of our living rooms or other stuff, but like changing a bathroom is sometimes it's one of the most rigid <laughs> elements as ceramics. Yeah. So I created many like AI generated ceramics and they were like blending into each other and it was not like a rigid anymore. Great. Thank you, Ahmed. You're welcome. Uh, let's continue with Iran. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's uh, let's maybe repeat the questions again if people just joined okay. now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, how have you have XR technologies helped you challenge traditional gender norms and create more inclusive narrative in your art? Okay, thank you again. <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> I can say that af after the exhibition I mentioned in the first question, in the first part, I actually experienced a more comprehensive project uh, called uh, Sigil. And now we are seeing some uh, pictures uh, of that exhibition. Uh, it is a mixed reality project, actually, that we produce uh, with an international team in Barcelona, as you mentioned, as a part of Inuncida project in 2022 of Fronteda Institute uh, of Art and Culture. And about that project, I can say about this project, I can say that it's a um, mixed reality exhibition which aims to uh, awaken our sacred sense in the digital space. And uh, our team uh, includes VR developers and architect designers and narrative designers, uh, AR developers, a 3D scanning expert and digital artists. So as a digital artist, I was responsible for uh, drawing and modeling texturing the sigils uh, and um, the 3D rendering of them. Maybe you can show, yeah. The the sigil uh, images part, maybe you can open it. Actually, you can see on there as well. Uh, and uh, I can say that uh, in addition to this, I actually designed the video artworks. Now you can see uh, the uh, show, uh, showing part of the uh, video artworks and uh, on the walls uh, as a part of the exhibition, because uh, actually we wanted to create as a journey uh, entrance the hall, first of all, watching uh, the uh, videos related with the story, with the textures, with the world, color shades, etc. And after that, it's the final output, the experience, it's the VR part. And on the 5th uh, April uh, 2022, we exhibited our first uh, realization of this project, Sigil project. And about it, uh, I can add that Sigil actually touched on what a group of people from different parts of the world uh, have in common, prejudices. So we are an interdisciplinary collective uh, of artists and developers representing, uh, uh, I believe, almost six nationalities and four continents. And we all have different cultural and religious practices. And however, uh, we're still sensitive individuals to um, the difficulties experienced by actually marginalized people. So therefore, we wanted to build a conceptual framework of our project on this theme. Uh, and we wanted a gamified art experience to integrate this theme into a VR world. So we chose characters from popular mythologies that are described as evil, but uh, are actually victims, we can say that, like Medusa from uh, Greek mythology, uh, Loki from Scandinavian mythology, uh, or that uh, in a common sense. And we wanted uh, to offer users actually a spiritual journey experience where they actually face themselves and are freed from all their prejudices in the process of uh, some sort of liberate, liberating, uh, we can say that these characters in this maze, now uh, you are seeing it, and uh, I can say that about this project uh, more, 
it actually reimagines mystical experiences as a collaborative journey from the physical to the transcendent, actually, uh, via a virtual, maybe a um, reality breach. So in the physical space, as I mentioned uh, briefly, interactive exhibits create intimate and um, cross-platform, maybe we can uh, call it like that, cross-platform, and contours uh, with the virtual world, actually, shaping it, um, uh, shaping it to uh, create a unique an embodied experience, we can call it like that, for each user or each audience. And at the center of the exhibition, there's a labyrinth, uh, maybe we can call it like that, our gateway to the unknown, uh, to free work maybe. And in the, in the headsets actually, we explore, uh, users explore, this uh, ancient symbol of self while their progress is shown in real time. You can actually, as an outsider uh, audience, you can follow the places of the experiences. So uh, actually this creates some sort of a first asymmetry related with that project. Uh, and after that, maybe uh, also, as I mentioned that I can add that, uh, we aim to uh, create some sort of a bridge station related with the main aim of the project, uh, liberation from your prejudices. Actually, we all have some prejudices. So uh, that's why actually it's important for us. And also I can add that each user, uh, each, each user is given actually a unit code, which they use to either identify themselves at a station and for their every step. And, um, the spirit maybe we can say that of their engagement is tracked and maybe later uh, if we have some uh, if we have uh, the chance to find some extra phones we actually work in progress on uh, our project and maybe we can create some uh, unique own personal sigil for every user or every audience something like that and actually uh, fine uh, for the final uh, world i can say that uh, we our project has been selected uh, for pitching on the new XR uh, new images XR market, and uh, last year two people from our team went to Paris as a representative to visit with the investors and investors and collectors and creators. Their talks stated that they would actually like to exhibit this project uh, in its current form. Um, I mean, uh, in various galleries around the world. Uh, however, they were not. Uh, very willing to support uh, some um, funding to develop the project. So as a team, we want to develop it, and we will hope to we hope to find uh, some extra funds to uh, get in progress on this project. Yeah, that's yeah. it, I believe. I hope this uh, video helps you to find the right sponsors <laughs> and keep continue to finish uh, this journey, or just finished it and exhibit with in yeah, uh, yeah, other yeah. countries. We hope, yeah, let's see it. <laughs> Who knows, we'll, yeah. we'll see. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Iran. Thank you. A... Okay, and uh, let's continue with Malta. Yes, we're listening. Okay. okay, hello again. And also, Iran, I hope that you will find the grant or the phone that you needed also. And so today I wanted to talk about the project uh, called PMS. And PMS was uh, one of the first actually AR project I created. And when I was studying in US, uh, I, I took like gender courses and stuff. So when I came back to Turkey, like some things start to bother me. And like things like, I don't know, like in Turkey, people sell menstruation pads in black bags. So when you go to market, uh, they put the menstruation pads in a black bag and give it to you as if it's something to be ashamed, ashamed of or something like that. Or when people get their menstruation, they ask each other like, oh, uh, like, uh, do you have a like pad? So they whisper again, like something to be ashamed for. Actually, it's like a part of our nature and stuff. So I was planning of an exhibition around it. And PMS uh, is came from there. And PMS is an attempt to create a dialogue on premenses syndrome that has been declared taboo or unreal for years. An experience that is 
suppressed, ignored, or not shared on or standardized. And I started this project with some questions in mind, like, um, does everyone's body, mind, and spirit react the same? Like, how does PMS turn into experience for both women and people around them? Do all women go through the same process? So these ideas were like in my mind, and I was thinking about like how can we develop. So I decided on having this AR exhibition, and also I really like because technology is like a mostly male dominant area, and having a I don't know team like PMS is like a such a like different and contrast uh, to this like idea of technology and like three Ds and stuff like everything is more rigid and stuff so this is more like fluid and it's mostly and this exhibition it was only women artists and uh, we did this first in 2017 then it was one of the first exhibitions I had exhibitions in Turkey and there were 19 artists and the second one was which one you are seeing right now was in uh, 2018 and there were 22 women artists and what I like in this one, people like the women in this uh, in this show were like from different countries, different backgrounds, and they had like sim different tastes, different biologies and everything. So everyone had their unique experiences. And when you go to the ex uh, exhibition, you see this like piece, just like a poster still in it. But when you look through your phone, uh, they are changing. So there's another layer to that. So it's almost like a secret that you need to put effort and then you need to understand it. And then with the, with the app, with the AR technology, you see something more, something more. Uh, I think like also AI is making it more like, I don't know how they say, like more mysterious kind of thing. So I enjoy that. And also that time we didn't have any ready apps that now we have like r and stuff. So we had to develop our own app uh to do that uh, yeah can i ask now, you something uh, sure. for this one uh, did you uh have a, a an own app for this uh exhibition did you like create an app for that one yes we have to develop because mm -hmm. the, during that time there wasn't and also the, all the libraries were like really bad and they were like all on the place and so it was like a stressful and a long journey and in the first mm -hmm. exhibition actually we didn't realize in the in the code uh, there was in a comments we didn't realize it it was saying that only for 10 images and we didn't realize it and it was like one hour before the exhibition we realized that because before the exhibition we like check everything one by one so we didn't uh -huh. understand we didn't check the whole thing at the same time uh -huh. so so it crashed and then uh, we can we could uh, like make it in the android because in the android in the apps you can just like instantly uh, create the app but with the I, apple it was a issue so we had to decide like t only 10 artists work were visible through air with their iphone so it was super stressful for me like with these technological stuff all the time like some things might happen that you didn't expect so actually this is a good part of it it's like it's almost like too much adrenaline doing this technological stuff and in this video we are seeing this uh, part of the like getting ready for the exhibition and some gifts And also with this exhibition, we were selling these posters as like AR posters and they were like really 
uh, buy little cheap posters so people could buy them and then actually have an AR piece at their home. And these are some of the examples from the first two exhibitions. Uh, while I was creating for the show, I was like really interested in like people from different countries, but also people with different styles, different techniques. So you can see here in like stop motion or uh, 2D animations or After Effects animations or like like Amy from Taiwan, she was using like inks to do that. So also seeing different techniques were important, like having the variety of uh, techniques uh, were important for me as well. Uh, did you also did the creation part of it, part of the exhibition? Yes, I did. Yeah, great. And uh, guys, it's 2018. It's also interesting, <laughs> like we are uh, getting starting to talk with AR these days more, but uh, Ahmed also uh, and uh, Ratam has a background in, in AR or like have been maybe in three, three years, more years they've been in this area. Um, Actually, I uh, I want to say that I was very impressed uh, from that exhibition, this exhibition. And thank you, Meltem, for uh, letting me. <laughs> I have a book chapter related with it in an academic part. Uh, yes. I, I wrote a book chapter related with the PMS and also the semiological analysis of each artwork in uh, the framework of the gender as well. And thank you again, Mansan, for letting me do it. <laughs> thank you for also including me in your book. It's, that's why like, we met with Iram also for yeah. yeah. this project. <laughs> it's not, and then like PMS, uh, we were thinking that how can people see it more and like how can like, it's more approachable. So we decided that we can have actually Instagram page and it can be, we can design it as almost like an online exhibition space. So we did that and then we made an open call as well. So some artists apply as well. And in the third third edition, we also with the online try, we also wanted to try something different. Uh, we want to get PMS out of a station where only women speak about, but rather discussed by all genders and non-binary folks. The idea was to break the taboos around PMS by sharing different individual experiences, whether those individuals physically experienced it or not. So also it was like a different challenge for us. Some artists didn't want to uh, like um, be part of this project. They were like, oh, I have I like, like there was like one guy, he was like, I'm a gay person. I never like been like around with women so much. I don't understand them. I don't want to be part of it. I was like, for sure. And so, some people were like, yes, I want to do something about that. And then they were like, really like some, like, I don't know, um, male artists were super interested in that. So I, it was interesting for me to see also how people react, how artists react to this project and whether they are like be part of it or not. And for the, for the third part uh, last year, actually, uh, or this year, last year, uh, Giphy reached us, and Giphy is uh, is like the biggest uh, search engine for gifts, and they are under the umbrella company of Meta. And they said that why don't we create something together? And then they want me to uh, find artists, and then they had a new feature on the website, and they want to uh, show this feature, but they want to show this feature with different artworks. So. They commissioned, uh, they came to us and then they said that we can we find new artists. And I was like, no, because like all the artists I work with were working for free and voluntarily for us because it was like all the projects were voluntarily. I was like, this time we're going to make some money. Let's do it from the same artists we had and then create something new. So we again with this time with GC, we created and selected 12 artists from the PMS community. And then uh, made made uh, four different. This was a poster, by the way, uh, for the project. And in this uh, in this animation we created, there were different topics. There were like uh, it was the first one was about taboos, and the second one was about bodily changes. The third one was mood swings. All of them under the umbrella of PMS. And the last one was in harmony. It was actually about 
positive aspects of uh, PMS. And it was super hard to find it uh, because uh, with this project, actually, I learned that like there aren't so many scientific research around the positive aspects of PMS. Uh, for instance, like when Mid Journey first came out, I was writing down like in the prompting, I was saying that like women in PMS and they were like, <sighs> women like images of women like really like in a rage or crying so it was like all the bad image around pms uh, so we were with this project we were trying to like alter it and then try to show the good aspects of pms as well and maybe we can see the animation now so in here each 10 seconds is different artists and they are all connected to each other So the first three were around taboo. Again, in here you can see different approaches. For instance, she's working only with watercolor and creating those. And this is an artist from France. He's doing embroidery animations. So she actually embroidered them and then connect them. And this artist from Turkey, Elixir. These were about bodily changes. In here, the, the challenge was to connect all of them together. But the artists decided on their terms and they decided how to connect from there to others. So the trans transitions were decided by the artist itself. And she's from Mexico City. <laughs> yes, and yes. That was it. I just want to say that this like PMS is an ongoing project. It's been six, seven years since we started. And in our community now, we have 60 artists from 12 different countries. And we have like 80 artworks in total. And we had like 8.2 million views on Giphy. And it was selected, I don't know, six different festivals around the world also. So I think you wow. will hear soon from us. I, when I first started, I didn't know that it's gonna be take so long, so long, and it will. But eventually, in time, we become like a big one family of <laughs> PMS animators, and then it's still growing. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Vata. It was a, looks like a a long journey, but still got your it's going, uh, which is also excited. Uh, I think we're uh, almost, we have uh, 10 minutes left or something, 12 minutes left. But And I have a last question for you, because probably like um, now uh, some artists or after uh, uploading to YouTube, uh, some of the artists uh, gonna, or I don't know, people who wants to be part of the creative part of the XR will uh, watch this. And I really want to um, um, hear uh, your advices and based on your experiences um, would you give to artists who are starting to use these technologies can you give them some advices like where they could start maybe um, let's start with Ahmed with this question okay yeah um, you know everything is changing everything is going to change also because when we look at even like when once we were playing Super Mario games and they were like 8-bit games and right now we are playing like very high resolution games with amazing graphics. So uh, graphic language always changes. So right now maybe there are some uh, like limits about some augmented reality or like VR technologies or like not every tool is not working very efficiently or every tool is not the same because if you create amazingly high graphic game some computers are not like working with those games there are some uh, problems like that but i think in the very future it will be all i mean more easy to apply 
Um, so I think the best advice would be they, they should be brave because everything is changing quickly and they can like they can just jump in the train and like experience more because it's all about experience. It's, it's all about experiments also. Thank you, Ahmed. Yeah, we just need to start with some of the uh, platforms because we have like mm -hmm. multiple platforms to work with, like Artwave, uh, as mm -hmm. you also probably you mentioned it, right? Uh, Artwave platform. Uh, they could just start with them also. Uh, very e easy to access. Mm -hmm. Getting easy day by day also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. And uh, cont let's continue with Iram. And what's your advice for the artists and people who are interested in XR? Where do, do they need to start, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to Ahmed's work, uh, actually, I can add that uh, first, uh, I believe that they need to be aware of entering a multi sensory world. So, uh, yeah, they might have familiar to use digital tools, etc., but the XR world is a bit different than this. So uh, I think it's important for them to know what kind of relationship maybe uh, they want to establish with their audience and choose the medium accordingly, such as AR, VR, or mixed reality. And also maybe I can say that it's, according <laughs> from my experiences, of course, uh, it's essential to think carefully about the technical um, differences or possible problems. Uh, actually, Melta mentioned a bit <laughs> uh, for the PNS uh, exhibition and uh, to shape the project according to, to all these things. And also uh, the budget part is important for me. Uh, is nearly everything, especially when we talk about the virtual reality project, because Eileen, uh, you have that kind of experience as well related with your master thesis, right? So uh, I think, especially when, if we talk about the VR project, I think the budget is one of the most essential parts of it. And uh, also, I can say that uh, it's certainly uh, a team effort, a team project. So just like shooting a movie, we can say that. So from storyboarding to modeling, from creating interaction to guiding the experience of visitors, etc. So that's why I think that it's very possible to produce um, immersive projects with an harmonious theme and invite your visitors to all your own immersive world. Yeah, I can say that. Yeah, thank you. Like teamwork is so important because sometimes like there are thousands of programs that we need to use and uh, we're just trying to be good at maybe like two or three, <laughs> uh, luckily, but uh, yeah, we need that. Uh, and we don't uh, need to know all of it. We don't need to. We don't need to, yeah. That's why with these technologies, we need to be just get back together uh, and uh, just, you know, make it mm -hmm. uh, better with our own uh, talents. And let's continue with Malta about AR, maybe. Yes, what do you, yes. What are your <laughs> advices? No, also, I definitely agree with you, Ram, with that, like saying that you don't need to know everything. Because when I first started seeing this, I was like, also like, I should do the design, I should do the creation, I should do the developing side or something like that. And I realized soon that I cannot do the developer side, like developers like that much, but actually collaborating with them and just knowing just a little bit and talking in, that, in their language, it's like really helpful. And then you don't get also stretched all over, also like trying to learn everything and actually sharing and creating with someone else is also very special and it's hard and also easier uh, in a way. And also for me, it was one of the most important thing was how like learning, how to learn something by yourself. Actually, it was like the, for me, the code is that, I don't know, like when you learn how to learn something, how to research something, everything is accessible then. Because now, like in my time, when I was in university, there weren't like YouTube wasn't developed that much. And like there were like Linda and, stuff like that so you have to pay money now everything is almost free and then you can find anything on the internet like sometimes i i don't know they people ask me on instagram some questions but actually everything is there like on like on google like if you can find anything and the most important thing for me to like to be able to do like proper research by yourself i think it was really important for me and also 
having a community is really important. Uh, for instance, I, I after AR, I start doing like IG effects a lot. And with the IG effects, I found a community on Facebook. And then there were people like me struggling and stuff. And so I could ask the forums and everything. So it was like really helpful uh, having friends or colleagues or peers that share the same passion and stuff so that, so that you can actually help and give information to each other and get benefited from it. So I think the, like, I don't know, forums and the groups are really beneficial, especially when you're first starting the uh, project. And also before we stop, I want to add that like the, like while we are using like and learning these new technologies, I be, believe that we need to be like really careful with bias systems, the algorithms that make up VR and AR experiences replicates like re replicates existing biases because it leaves off the data we feed it so we should be very careful and as an artist i i feel the i don't know responsibility of like creating like ahmed said like creating this like systems creating like uh like non-patriarchal unprejudiced post-gender like virtual world so it's like it, i think as an artist we all have this like responsibility and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, these are so important. Also, especially uh, for the community thing, like uh, me and Ira is a, a member of XR Turkey, and the XR Turkey group is like a um, non-profit group that you can join uh, uh, if you're all interested in XR or if you're a creator in XR, artist, developer, or if you have a startup, you have a company. Uh, in this group, we uh, chat a lot and ask questions uh, when we just stuck in a um, any topic. And these uh, also artist communities and like you know, XR communities helps a lot while improving our skill. Um, yeah, in our conversation today, we focused on XR um, and artistic discipline, and we looked at the works from a gender perspective uh, as artists and creators. Uh, we always want to emphasize that we also look what's happening in the world from human humanitarian perspective too. Uh, we would like to express our deep sadness for uh, the uh, dire humanitarian crisis that have occurred and the state that we are on, um, we are in favor of peace. Um, thank you, everyone who participated online and to our esteemed um, speakers. This season, season has been both enlightening and inspirational. Um, and uh, if you wish to connect with us, connect our uh, speaker artists, please feel free to reach out to them from their socials. Uh, it was a very enjoyable talk for me. And uh, do you want to add something more? We still have four minutes, I guess, left. Thank you for sharing amazing artworks with us. Yeah, yeah I, I thank you because uh, I, I'm, I'm some sort of a fan of Meltem and Ahmed as well. So uh, I'm very glad to be part of the, that kind of invitation and the panel with them. So it's a privilege for me. Thank you. Thank for you. me too. Thank you very much. I really like also three of yours work. <laughs> and thank you for the invitation and everything. Yeah. yeah. Hope we will make more talks together uh, with AWE. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. then we can finish. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you.